yo, welcome. Welcome to day. I don't even know what day it is. But I'm making this game called Songbringer. What's up, everybody? Today I'm working on AI for um, this third playable character. It's not, you don't, it's always a two player game. <clears throat> or it's mostly a single player game. Sometimes it's two player if you wanna, if you have a buddy or a friend or something. Uh, but this is uh, this is Belle. She's the female playable character. You get her at the end of the game. She's really powerful. Oh no! <sighs> so, oh, what the hell's going? On? Oh, it's because she's got AI halfway on. So now I got to fix that. <clears throat> we set her to human. Oh yeah, she was just setting a different direction. Okay. Anyways, um, so I'm working on her AI now. Um, I got some pretty simple AI started. So she can run behind you, shoot stuff. It's um it's a very simple AI, it's very short, but it's very effective. What's up, T? Welcome, man. The only problem so far with her AI is that she gets stuck behind stuff. You're first! So that's the first thing I'm going to do today, is to work on her um, pathfinding. So Jib, the other playable character, he's already got um, some nice pathfinding. So it should be pretty simple to kind of copy over the pathfinding from his AI to um, her AI. So her AI works with the, uh, the behavior trees and stuff like that. So it's scriptable, and then Jib's AI is all coded, hard coded, which is I don't know, kind of like I should have. I feel like I should go back and kind of recode his AI to make it scripted, but that might lose some of the feeling that that's gone into how he currently functions. So, anyways, I'm just gonna kind of leave his AI all coded and her AI scripted. So um, that's the thing is I gotta kind of convert some of that code over that does pathfinding to the scripting system. But that'll be pretty neat because other AI can also use pathfinding in the futures, like enemies, for example. Let's see what happens when we drop a bomb on the screen. Sweet items. Yes. Oh, there's a little mistake. She walked up there. Little things, little things to get her AI all perfect, you know, like transitions between areas, stuff like that, all that's gotta be dialed in. Oh, she stopped the block from moving. But she's pretty cool, she's kinda like the ultimate lazy gamer. If you're playing single player, she's the ultimate lazy gamer's dream. And she just goes and fights everybody for you. Good job, pal. Thanks a lot. Pretty effective. Um, look at how short her AI is. This is so crazy. <clears throat> this is it. it. Starts at line 100. It's only 38 lines of script. It does all that. So I'm pretty happy with that. So, but there'll need to be a little bit added, of course. <clears throat> so starting off, I'm gonna go and um, give every AI component is now gonna have a a vector, I think, of pathfinding locations. Yeah, it is, right? It's really short to be able to do that, you know? She's basically got a combat sequence. Or no, these are, these are where she switches between her two modes. She's got one mode where she's in combat and one mode where she follows you. And that's it. Super simple. <clears throat> so, mood jib. Is where this is where all the coded AI for Jib is, and Pathfinder Path. That's right. Path, Jib Path, Area Pause, Jib Path. Hmm. I need to add a, an Area Pause too. What does Jib Path Area Pause do? Yeah, you got a website. Nice, man. Is it, oh, is it all set up?
just going to turn the music down just in case you use any copyrighted music. Oh, okay, now you got content there. Sweet, man. I love the swarm. That's cool. I just noticed how um you've been... Oh, cool. You can, like, build your swarm more? Way to go, Teak. This is awesome. Whoa. Okay, so you can have, like, parts of your... Oh, you can split your swarm up. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, it's not copyrighted? Oh, cool. Come back to me. Come back to me. Where'd you go? Oh, it's cool. I like it. Got a nice mood to it. Nice. Stream green light button's not working. Where is it supposed to go? Is there another link to it somewhere? <clears throat> oh, green light's not up yet. Oh, uh, okay. All right, dang. Well, um, yeah, definitely let me know. Definitely let me know, and I'll vote for you for sure. Check out your press kit. What's up, voice of grog? What up? What up? Oh, nice. You do use the you use press kit. Cool, man. Good job. Look at this. Nice. Right on, man. Looking good. I'm excited for you. Yeah, I can't wait to vote for you on Steam Greenlight and, uh, I'll send out a tweet too, and um, when you're up on green light, I'll send out a tweet and see if uh, see if that helps you get greenlit a little bit. <clears throat> okay, I think we are gonna need an area pause for these pads as well. So just to double check. Um, when it, when an AI creates a pathfinding, it should make sure that it um, uses the right path still from the right area. So, for example, Vel can cross areas, so her path should always she should never follow one of her paths if she's moved to a new area since then. So we call this path area pause and path. So every AI component will now have these two, these two things. So let's get that compiling. Oh, wait, one more thing. There's one more thing to compile. What's up, Hanko? How you guys doing? Behavior. Behavior pathfinding because I want to I want one word that says if pathfinding I'm 
or maybe path, if path, and then there could be path, path to certain point. Yeah, okay, it'll be, let's go behavior path. All right, so get that compiling. TGIF, thank God it's Friday, yeah. And there's a lot of other, there's a lot of other ways to put that, thank God it's, um, Shit, I can't remember now. <laughs> There's a lot of other ones. How's it going, everybody? Hey, has anybody played No Man's Sky? I've been seeing the reviews. I'm like, whoa, dang. The PC reviews are crazy because of all the bugs they have. But um, I, I've watched a few people, a few people play it. But has anybody played No Man's Sky? Behavior flip path. You seen him play? You saw, yeah, you saw it too. Yeah. What'd you guys think so far? <clears throat> so we got the word path can be added to the AI, and the AI component itself has two new variables, a Pathfinder path and a V3I path area pause. Yeah, I agree, I agree. I definitely agree with you there. I think a Pathfinder path is just a vector of Pathfinder locations, which is just a pair of integers. So that's a vector of a pair of integers. Shouldn't be too much um, to add to a AI component. Didn't feel too groundbreaking, yeah. Yeah, I'm interested to see where it kind of goes because there, there was a lot of hype. There was a lot of hype in the game dev community about it. So I'm interested to see how it turns out. It definitely looks beautiful. I think they really achieved their, achieved their goals uh, visually, artistically. I really wonder what it's like to play it, though. It seems like, you know, I, I can watch people play, but how does it feel to play it? What's the gameplay like, you know? Okay, so I'm going to start coding um, this new behavioral functionality into the scripting system here. And the way I usually like to start that is to just script it first, kind of how I would want to, and then and then make the code work according to the script. <clears throat> so she needs a um, let's just oh let me show you guys what I'm talking about here first. I'm working on giving a giving Vel and all AI. Uh, the ability to pathfind. <clears throat> the world gen looks a bit rough. Oh yeah. I watched a dude um, actually shop at a store there. There's he was like talking to an NPC and stuff. So yeah, here's Vel. She's pretty. Um, <clears throat> she's got a really simple AI so far, but it's quite effective. She just comes into the area and starts fighting, and when she's done fighting, she just follows you. I say she's effective, and then she just gets stuck like that. So this is exactly what I need, is I need for her to be able to pathfind around this water here, and go find the enemies she's trying to, trying to get to. Oh nice, we got a, got a, uh, a killer bomb there. So, just refining your AI. Okay, so I'm thinking... If she's already... If she's already has a path,
So that would be like not if path. I need to kind of add this to all the other. Oh wait, no, no. She can she can do her combat, no problem. Wait, no, we need to set the direction. Yeah, this one we need we can't do a combat fire if she has a path she's trying to get. Yes, I do have a planned bug reporting reporting feature. <clears throat> yeah. I haven't got that implemented yet, but it is on my Trello list. But for now, if you want to if you just want to report bugs, just send them to my email or um or tweet me or whatever. Send me a Twitch message, anything. And uh, also on Windows, there's there's automatic crash reporting on Windows. Um, it saves these M dump files if you have a crash, and then Steam automatically sends them to me after you get ten of the same one. So, but if you if you do get a, like a random crash here and there, like one or two, you can always just email me the M dump file, which is in your Windows folder of the uh, of the game. Where he targets hero. Here's where she stops. That should also be not of path and follow direction, not of path. All right, so that I think that's kind of right for stopping her from doing her normal directions if she has a path finding path she's trying to find. Um, next is something where she should initiate a path finding sequence, which would be sequence to path find. Um, it doesn't really matter what mode she's in it, unless, well, okay, it would have to be, she'd have to be either in, uh, in mode zero, which is follow the human, follow the hero, or mode one, which is combat. Um, and then if she's stuck, so either one of those, if she has, if she's moving, if she has any direction, and if she's stuck, then path towards the target, which could be could be a hero or it could be an enemy. Okay, that um, that I think is how the AI should script how the script should look for for pathfinding. So next thing is to implement it. Um, AI system, we need to first of all be able to check for a path. There's behavior if. So this is going to be the if path. What's up, Just Amy? Two bez? If has path. Or if is pathfinding. If subtype equals k behavior path, it's just going to be if path um, return if oh yo I got a way better way of wording this. Okay, so we can just go if path any. Or no, if path none. So yeah, if there's if path none or if path any. Uh, 
that's going to be return um, e.ai.path.size or path.empty. And then this is basically any other word you give it is going to be if not empty. All right. The next thing is going to be setting a path, which yeah, it could go right after dir or vector. These are pretty much where you initialize movement. So if type is k behavior path. We want to initialize some pathfinding towards towards either the target Actually, I can't think of any other re other no, I, I could think of something in the future, I'm sure. Um, it, yeah, so I'll start with if subtype is k behavior target. So you pathfind to target. Uh, this is, um, we want to go to mood jib. And jib path, this is where we get jibs path set. All right, this is where we get the tile position for our destination and our source. And then we pathfind Okay, so this I'm going to make into a function to reuse this. It's going to look something like this. Um, pathfind given a starting point. destination, the path, and the max path size. And then if if the path is not empty, then we set the pause. Okay, that's how that should look. And we should actually don't even need to pass that. Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna make this a usable function, or reusable function, I should say. Pathfind, cons v3f ref, Source E3F ref dest uh, 
Hmm, path, finder, path, ref. Oh, yeah, we might as well pass in the area, too. Nah, we could just get it. Auto ref area equals area area. Here we got source. Here we got dest. That gets those start sources and dest into tile positions. We clear the existing path. Here we clear it again if it, we return a bad path, basically. And then here we um, clean up the path. Path size is greater than max path size. We erase stuff off the end until it becomes the right path size. Okay, good. The next thing is to make sure jib still works. Oh no, what happened? Oh, oh. I was like, where did this go? Okay, so I'm gonna turn off Vel, turn back on Jib. Make sure Jib still path finds. Cool, good job, buddy. He's got his little green diamonds. He shows his path. He's he's walking. Awesome. Um, now I can turn jib back off, turn vel on, and we can start um, pathfinding. So we'll go int target, e.ai.target. Should be pretty explicit about this if the if the AI does not have or if the target is missing we should return false. So that'll make it so if I ever mess up in the future and I call the a script calls pathfind and it doesn't have a target, then I'll know. What's up, Wissiso? Yeah, pathfinding AI, and it should be pretty short too. Um, this is really all all there is to start a path is just that path target, and then the other the other thing that's needed to do this pathfinding in the script sense is just this: if you have a path or you don't have a path. And I already did this a little bit, if you have a path. So now I'm just working on the, the setting it up so you can actually do this path here. And I got that function reused from Jib. So we start with the source of <coughs> the entity's current position. And we're going to the target's position. And we put it into this AI's path. Uh, 
Uh, no, I wrote it. I wrote it. I used the. Um, I did use a really great article though to learn how to do pathfinding. So um, Red Blob Games. Here it is. Introduction to A Star. This is an excellent, excellent article on how to do A Star. So I totally just. I just read this, understood it. You know, I slept on it. Woke up the next morning and was like, "Oh, it's not very hard to write." And actually, he has some example code too. So there's like all this great example code and like. Tons of languages, PHP, C, C Sharp, everything. So let me post you this link if you're interested. What's so great about this article is it, it like it's got all these awesome JavaScript things that actually show you how it works and stuff. Yeah, totally. It's a very well presented article. Yeah, it's like, and he's rewritten this article several times to make it even simpler and, and better. And I'm really impressed. Okay, so we got the path started, and if the path succeeded, so if it's not empty, then e.ai.path area pause is going to be area or we'll get pause, whatever. Okay, now we should have a path set up. The next thing, um, I want to make it so you can show a path. Here's where Jib um, does his, he shows his path using this debug diamond. Man, that's a really short thing. That's awesome. Okay, so I'll go to this and go where it, um, the AI system has some debug section. Here it is. Oh, oh, thanks, Wissoso. Appreciate that. I, You know what? I was actually intimidated by A-Star 2 for years, years and years and years. And then when I finally read that article, I realized how simple A-Star is because that article finally put it in a way that I could understand. I was like, oh, A-Star is not as hard as I thought. So maybe that helps you too. You know, maybe it's like, it intimidated me. I didn't, I couldn't figure it out. So, and there was nothing that ever really made it sound simple and that just that just totally got rid of all my fears and doubts about A star. So, and that was just a few months ago. Filter foe. Oh, this is where it shows the the enemies a uh, and hit points and stuff. Here's where we'll show the path. So if verbosity is greater than or equal to one, yeah, definitely. Oh, you did a star into Java? Oh, okay, cool. So you already you already know, man. Nice. So if the AI if the AI's path is not empty, we'll show it for each position in the. AI's path, we looks like we need the area now. There, cool. So we've got some stuff set up, so it should be able to show the path. Okay, let's run this out. If um, if this works so far, what we'll see is when Vel gets stuck, she'll initiate a pathfinding, and it should show some green dots where she wants to go. 
but it won't actually make her follow the path. There's nothing in the code yet that makes it actually her follow it. It's just it just should initiate the path. You're forced. Yeah, right. You have no choice to, but to learn how to do it. Yeah. This next area over, there's some definite places where she can get stuck. Oh yeah, nice, look at that. She's like, she's got her path totally set up. She keeps on trying to pathfind again and again and again. Yeah, she's like, pathfind, 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 pathfind. Cool. Okay, good. So that's confirmed, and we have a debug, a little bit of debugging already in place, too. So I can turn on some debugging and be like, okay, I can see where the path is and all that. Now we just got to make it so we implement how the AI follows that path. And I think it should be as simple as. Shoot, I could make it actually, I could I could put this automatically into the AI's code, or I could put it into the AI's script. And my instinct is telling me to put it in the script. Okay, I think I'm going to check when what I did so far because I'm at a, cross, a crossroads right here. So I added something to Vel's AI so she can pathfind. I'm reusing Jib's pathfinding function. I can show the current path. We've got the if is pathfinding or not pathfinding script. We've got the pathfind script. Cool. So it would look something like this, like if follow path, like if if path any dir path. That's all it would be. Basically that would just make it set the AI would set its current direction towards the next point in the path. I think this will work. And then we could also put the word, I could use another thing here to like path none. That would set the path to nothing. If ever need. Yeah. Okay. One thing though, is it if if the player or if the AI is close to, is very close to the first point in their path, we need to remove that point in the path.
remove path move first path finding position if close Oh, also this, we need to clear the path if it's from the last area. AI dot path that's dot empty okay so we got the path we know it's we have some path and if areas not equal to e dot AI dot path area pause then we clear the per current path Okay, and this needs to be its own its own block. Isometric, yeah, the graphic is invaluable. Drawing them in the correct order. It can be tricky to draw boxes of various sizes in the correct order. This is long. Let me put it. Let me let me grab a link to that. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. I always I love getting stuff like that. To um, in fact, that reminds me. I should totally post a link about something. Wait, wait. This is just a a ping file. Last night on Twitter, I, I read the, the awesomest, um, it was such a great article on animating. Where do I go to like my favorites? I think I'd have to go to my likes. Uh, it's not here. Oh, the source went down? Dang. Yeah, thank God for archive.org. It's, it's saved me so many times. Okay, it's not, I don't see it. Maybe it's in my notifications. I think I tweeted about it last night a little bit. Dang it, where'd it go? T 
Dude. There's this great article I read last night. Damn it. Where'd it go? Bookmark I didn't bookmark it. I was on my I was on my iPad. I know I should have bookmarked it. Maybe it's tweets and replies. There it is. Yeah, this is it. This is such a great article. Let me post a link to, um, first of all, to that. Yeah, check this out. This is cool. If you if you're into like you know like upgrading your art skills and stuff or stuff like that, I should retweet this right now too. Wait, oh, don't retweet me. I want to retweet his article. I think this is it right here. Duh, what happened? Retweet this. There we go. That's a kick-ass article. It's okay. So this is the animation, right? That he does, and he shows how he makes it in this YouTube video, and uh, it definitely helped me learn a few things. I didn't. I didn't know. I was like, whoa. It helped me upgrade my skills a little bit in art. So yeah, you're welcome. Right? Yeah, into being a better artist, totally. Right? Me too. Anything I can do to like just be a little bit better artist, that definitely helped me. So, okay, so we're gonna remove the first pathfinding position if we're close to it. So distance squared is, well, first we'll get the tile pause. That's going to be area, get tile pause, given e.ai.path. First, wait, wait, no, this is not. Tile pause. We want this one. Path of begin. So distance squared is the distance from P Why is that? Why is that not right? But oh, not path up again. Path up front. So now we want. The want to subtract our position, and then distance squared is going to be p dot length squared. Oh, and this is e dot ai dot path dot erase e dot ai dot path. I'll begin.
Now we need to be able to set the direction towards a path. Yes, I have been bitten by floating point approximation. Yeah. Um, the last video game I wrote was a multiplayer, a real-time multiplayer game called Hero Bash. It was for iOS. And the um, it took me weeks to figure this out. But, um, yeah, I figured out that basically on, on, like, iPad or something versus a Mac computer or something like that, the, the floating point approximation was a little bit different, which caused the entire game on one on one computer or one device to basically play out differently than the other one so it would cause the desync pattern and um, and then I've also been bitten up by it here in Songbringer once where I was like uh, but where um, upgrading to using doubles actually fixed it but it was where it where using floating point math actually put um, a piece of pixel art on on half a pixel instead of on the right pixel and it was the weirdest thing it was like if it was zero it was wrong if it was zero anything other than zero it was oh it was it was right i don't remember but yeah i've definitely been i've definitely been hit by that a couple times yeah the the multiplayer one was maddening for sure it was i was so frustrated for weeks but when i finally figured it out i wrote i rewrote the entire like game engine to use integer math for all the um, for all the positions for everything instead of floating point math uh, yeah that was that was tough it was definitely a learning experience writing a multi a real-time multiplayer game So everything, every one of these calls to dir, it's going to set a direction. And I want it to automatically clear the path because if, a, if it does have a path, it's going to be messed up. The direction is going to be messed up anyway. So this is like mutually exclusive. Can I have path and a dir. Unless we are setting the direction towards the path. So we'll do that here. If subtype equals k behavior path, and we want to set our direction towards the current path point. Man, I don't know. I don't know. Should this be like this? Because we already figured out where the current path point was earlier in code. So it kind of doesn't make sense to do it again here. Or does it? It kind of does. It kind of makes a lot more sense to do this than to not do this, I think. So my instincts tell me, at least. Okay, so once again, we have to get the current point, set a direction, to set a vector. So the position is 
area, area, get tile, pause. We have to have a, a path though. And then the vector is going to be from that point minus the current point. So P minus equals E dot position dot pause. Auto equals auto type. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's the same in C sharp. I'm not a, I'm not a C sharp coder at all. Um, Auto just means that it it determines the time. This is at compile time, which I guess C sharp would be too, right? You can't have runtime. Uh, maybe you can set runtime stuff in C sharp. I don't know, but yeah, this is a totally compile time thing. It basically just determines the type of the variable for you based on the return type of this function. So or whatever you're whatever you're assigning it to, like auto f equals 1.0 f. That would make it a float. If it was auto f equals one, it would make it an integer. Otherwise, it just uses the return type of whatever the function is. What's up, Rocket Bunny? You're reading a file in C, and I want to locate the exact amount of memory that the file takes up. How would I do that? Use file size. Sounds like var. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, you can't just do auto foo. Yeah, totally. Or maybe it's not size. Oh, that's right. Yeah, C doesn't have it. You have to seek to the end of the file and then get your FTEL positions. Here you go, Rock Bunny. It's pretty simple. Okay, so that should return, a, that's going to give us a vector, and then it doesn't really matter if we normalize it, I don't think. You can just go direction from vector, so e.ai.dir equals uh, compass direction from vector p flags e.move. No, e.input.flags. Okay, and I do want to see a, br a breakpoint here to make sure that's going to work. So that means this is going to constantly be calling that follow path AI script thing. So I may want to do it this way with the script or may want to actually hard or kind of code this into the AI system. So this area over here is pretty good for testing this out. So I'll save here. All right, she's not following the path. Oh, she's calling two pathfind. Oh, she keeps on pathfinding over and over and over and over. So that means that her to pathfind function needs to be if if path none. And I don't know if I hooked up the if path none part yet. Oh yeah, I did. If path none, 
if path any. All right. So that should make it so she, she pathfinds once if she needs to. Oh, cool. So now she's setting a direction towards her current path. She was kind of on the lower left corner of the screen and I was in the more in the top right part of the screen. So that means her direction should either be east or northeast. And the position should have started, where is it? Uh, oh, I should have set the breakpoint right before this, but the vector essentially should be a positive x and a positive y. Oh, it might be negative y if she's pathfinding down a little bit first. Okay, so this was going to return what? What's that direction? Probably not going to show it. Oh, yes, nice, we have this. Sometimes this debugger doesn't work. Southeast, good. All right. Let's see if this works. Follow path, follow path, follow path. She's not quite able to get to that pathfinding position because it's just above her. Dang. And now she's stuck forever because fine for Jib because Jib could fly. Jib can fly over stuff and that makes it really easy for him to follow paths. But for an entity like Vel, she has, you know, she's constrained by not being able to fly and having to walk around things like water and stuff. So I never want her to be able to get into this kind of situation where she just goes forever and ever and ever looping over the same path. Try it again. Oh, nice. Oh, sweet. Oh, she does work sometimes. like that going north right there it's like the path is a little bit too these little pathfinding points are too high there we have to go like this that resets our path oops that worked though going north around that one This one she's just able to, yeah, look at that. Oh, this is so great. This is so awesome. This is like half, halfway to victory. So sometimes her paths don't work. Sometimes they do. It's like the pathfinding, it's just not quite right. Yeah, the A star is fine. I know the A star is fine. It's just that it's it's where those little green dots are placed exactly 
that have to be they have to figure out what's wrong with those exact points and then get those to work so yeah I think um I think that's looking pretty good for today's for today's stream I think I'm done I gotta get some I gotta get some rest get some dinner get some rest and uh, come back to this with a fresh mind because this is pretty close this is actually pretty close to being finished if I could just refine those little green dots a little bit she should be done she doesn't even need to do her pathfinding most of the time. Most of the time she can uh, use her kind of quasi-pathfinding, which is just sliding along a wall. So, yeah, so see you guys. Have a great have a great night, everybody. It's good chatting with you. And uh, as always, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate all your support and uh, your encouragement and everything. So, see you next time.